नमो नम फ्रेंड्स आई एम आर आर के वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल वर आई टॉक अबाउट ऑल थिंग्स बुकिश सो टूडे एज द टाइटल सजेस्ट आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू गाइज सम रिकमेंडेशन बेस्ड ऑन सर्टन सिमिलैरिटीज बिटवीन दम नाउ दिस इज लाइक इफ यू लाइक दिस बुक मे बी यू हैव अ बेटर चांस ऑफ लाइकिंग द बुक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू सजेस्ट This is not a novel concept by any means many many booktubers have done this before but I had never felt inspired to do this before today that's because I didn't find any books that met certain criteria for me and also I didn't have enough books to put into this theme but this last week I read a certain book which set a flame the inspiration in me to do this this video i hope you will get some recommendations for yourself from this video but before getting on with the video i would like to wish a very very happy deepavali to everybody and anybody who celebrates it across the globe may this be a very safe happy joyous and cracker filled deepavali for all of you okay then so let's get on with the video where i will be suggesting books based on their similarity that is if you like this book then you probably will like this other one that i'm suggesting the first book that i am going to talk about and that actually initiated this recommendation video is the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood now everybody and their mother is reading this book and they are gushing over this book and i am no different i absolutely loved this book it's amazing and while i was reading this book i realized that there is one other book that gave me the same vibes now that book is mo dao zushi by mo xiong tong xiu this is actually a chinese novel and it is not a romance novel it's a wuxia fantasy novel and unfortunately it's not yet officially translated into english but don't worry the official translation of mo dao zushi is getting released this december by seven seas publishing so i for one and i'm very 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 excited for that official english translation release of mo dao zushi now i feel mo dao zushi the romance especially is very very similar to the love hypothesis the love hypothesis is a romance story of a professor and a phd graduate this is a book which is set in a stem environment and both of them are high achieving individuals this is their romance and it is done so refreshing singly well that i absolutely adored every second of reading that story now mo dao zushi as i told you before it's a wuxia fantasy so romance is not the only plot it has a variety of subplots within that it is a boy love story so it is a story of wei wuxian and lan wangji they have something called as cultivation they are involved in that and the problems they face what kind of cultivation what is good what is bad there are lots of subplots you have brother sister relationship you have friendship there are whole lot of themes tropes relationships that is explored in this novel so don't go in to read modao zushi just expecting a romance novel it's much 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 more but the romance in modao zushi reminded me of the love hypothesis hence i'm suggesting it to you so let's go a little deeper into the similarities that i found between them so the first one is the way adam is so protective of olive lan wang ji is also very very protective of wei wuxian not in the way that it stifles his creativity or stifles his nature it's not like that their protectiveness is so healthy and so adorable to read about it's how healthy relationships should be both lan wang ji and adam display that unique way of protectiveness towards their love interests then there is also this poor rich dynamic so lan wang ji is extremely rich he is from a very reputed family whereas wei wuxian is always downtrodden he is always poor uh, lan wang ji subtly helps 
Wei Wuxian, he doesn't mind opening his purse strings for Wei Wuxian. It's sometimes very hilarious in Modao Zushi. The same dynamic plays in um, Adam and Olive's case also. Adam is a tenured professor, so obviously he earns really well, whereas poor Olive is a graduate, PhD graduate, living on a stipend. She's also an orphan, so she doesn't have much money. So there is this cute dynamic between them where he keeps feeding her because he knows she is always starving. So he keeps feeding her, which is so good to read about. It's an amazing relationship dynamic that I absolutely adored. And then you have a lot of pining and angst in the story. So Adam keeps pining over Olive when she's completely clueless. Same happens with Lan Wangji. He keeps pining over uh, Wei Wuxian and he is uh, completely clueless. So that similarity was fun. And then obviously, as I said before, um, Wei Wuxian and Olive both are completely clueless protagonists. They have no idea that their love interests are loving them so passionately and so deeply. So that is there. Then there is one more trope that I absolutely adored in both these uh, books. That is nobody but you trope. That is Lan Wangji or Adam. They are prickly. They are standoffish with everybody else but their love interests. But Olive or Wei Wuxian. So that is so cute. It was very, very nice to read about. Then there is a little bit of miscommunication in both of these novels. They don't tell the other person about their feelings for varieties of reasons. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work but in both of these books it absolutely worked for me. And then there is this one theme that is there in both these books and that is about talent getting exploited. See Wei Wuxian is extremely talented. He is very very innovative and creative and you can see that people exploit his genius. And similar you see the same kind of thing happening in the love hypothesis where Adam's genius or even Olive's genius tends to get exploited by people close to them. So that subtle theme is there in both of these books. Then the best part that I thought is there in both these books is how when they are together they bring the best of each other. Be it Wei Buxian or Lan Wangji or Olive or Adam they bring out the best in each other. They also totally accept each other which is very rare and which is kind of an essential ingredient in a very healthy and good relationship. So lots and lots of similarities between these two couples in these two books. So if you see strictly from a romance perspective I think that if you like the love hypothesis, I think you will most definitely like Mo Dao Zushi. Wait for the official release in December or maybe you can check out the blog where the unofficial translation of this Chinese novel is available online for free. You can get started with that for now and then get the book in December. That was the first book. Now I don't want to take as much time talking about each of these books as I did with the first book. So I'm hoping the next few recommendations will be pretty fast. So the next recommendation is if you like Captive Prince by C.S. Picard, then I think you would like Unhinged by Only James. Captive Prince again is a boy love or gay story between two princes of enemy territories and one gets sold as a slave to the other prince and that prince gets an opportunity to take revenge on this prince. How romance blossoms between them, that is the story. It is a fantasy series. The Unhinged, meanwhile, is not a fantasy series. It is a contemporary romance story and its premise is also quite interesting. So one scientist, he adopts seven kids with psychopathic tendencies and he thinks that he can nurture them in a way where their psychopathic tendencies can be channeled to do good for the society. We have seven stories elaborating on each of the kid. As of now, I think three books have been released. Unhinged is the first novel of the last boy. Unhinged is a romance between one guy and another guy whose father was killed by the hero. So in both these stories, Captive Prince as well as Unhinged, it follows 
follows the enemies to lovers trope in both the cases people want revenge against the other for some reason in the case of captive prince it is because the prince's brother was killed by the other prince hence he wants revenge on him and in the case of unhinged the father was killed by the other guy so he wants revenge so it's kind of enemies to lovers and in both these stories trigger point is the revenge it's the thirst for revenge that triggers their interaction that triggers their relationship so in both these cases you see that revenge is the trigger for that then the most important thing in both these cases is that healing and gaining strength from each other is a major theme in both these books so they ground each other they they help each other a lot this is even more significant in this case because it is enemies to lovers so it is kind of difficult for the author to build that trust and to make it believable hence i feel that if you like one book you will definitely like the other one as well next are two ya fantasy novels if you like from blood and ash by jennifer l armand trout then i think you will like girl serpent and thorn by melissa basher dost here in both these stories you have princesses okay both the heroines are princesses then uh, you have the heroine hidden away from the world for a variety of reasons they both have isolated and a very lonely upbringing they have serious self image issues and they also have some suspicious saviors um both of them unwittingly get embroiled in the politics of the kingdom so i think if you like one you most certainly will like the other next are thrillers both of them are japanese translated thrillers if you like confessions by kane minato you should check out salvation of a saint by kego higashino because in both of this it's a revenge story of women okay so in the case of confessions it is the revenge story of a mother whose 4 to 5 year old daughter gets killed which gets framed as an accident but actually it was a murder and they are not the murderers are not brought to justice she tries to go on a revenge path salvation of a saint is also a revenge story where a wife tries to wife takes revenge on her husband both of these are revenge stories and i must say confessions it is one of the best first chapter i have ever read in my life the way the first chapter ended i literally closed my book and sat for a few seconds thinking about that ending i'm talking about the first chapter not the ending of the novel the first chapter it is extremely unique and amazing so do check both these books out confessions by kane minato and salvation of a saint by keigo higashino both of these have revenge plot they have strong and determined female character actors both of them are perceived to be weak and delicate hence the makeover is that much more impactful both their vibes are very similar obviously because they are japanese translated novels so i think you will like both of them so the next recommendation is a little hard one i mean it's very hard to digest okay both of them are slightly different genres and maybe it is catered to different audiences as well monday is not coming by Tiffany D Jackson so if you liked i mean i don't think we can enjoy that kind of a book because it's a very hard book to read but if you found monday's not coming is your kind of a book then i think you should read night swim by megan golden now night swim has very adult themes monday's not coming talks about issues related to teenagers so i'm not sure if it's a ya thriller or what but night swim is most certainly an adult thriller because it deals with issues related to adults in monday's not coming we have two girls who are very close to each other one fine day monday disappears and nobody seems to care what happened to monday it's only her friend who keeps asking her adults where is monday why is monday not coming so this is a very very poignant story it was an amazing thriller it was heartbreaking to read i have a review of monday's not coming in my blog so if you want to 
check that out please do that i will give the link in the description box below in night swim the heroine is a podcaster every season of her podcast she tries to investigate a certain crime now in this season she is going to cover a rape case in a small town while she is trying to do that she gets a letter from an anonymous person who wants this podcast lady to investigate the death of her sister 20 years back both these stories involve girls who are extremely close to each other in one case they are best friends in the other book they are sisters in both these stories one gets lost and the other dedicates her entire life to find the lost one and in both these stories you find that the adult society is extremely apathetic to what is happening to these girls they don't give to hoots about the missing girls both these stories stories tackle the fight for justice and both are extremely poignant they are violent and they are very hard to digest themes they are loaded with trigger warning so please note those trigger warnings before getting into these books they are very hard hitting and solid stories the next recommendation is not as morose as the previous one and that is the final empire which is the first book in the miss bond series by brandon sanderson so if you have read the final empire and you liked it then i suggest you give a try to the ruins of gorlan by john flanagan so this is an old series and an old novel so probably you might have read ruins of gorlan rather than the first empire but if you have read that then read the final empire because both of them handle similar themes now in both these books we see certain common themes for example the underprivileged kid gets recruited by a mentor and he trains them and in both these cases the kids unwittingly become the chosen ones and in both these stories we see that the kids have some hidden talents which are uncovered by the mentor and both these stories have excellent mentor mentee relationship so i hope you will give either one or both of these books a try last but not the least i have three books to recommend to you these three books are not exactly the same they don't match each other in every single way but they have certain common aspects between them the vibes are similar so if you like one of them i'm sure you would like to try the rest of the two so the first book is the unhoneymooners by christina lauren it is a very very hyped book in the romance community community so if you have read the unhoneymooners then you should give the hating game by sally thorn a try and if you have read the hating game by sally thorn then i would suggest you also give act your age e brown by taria hibbert a try because in the unhoneymooners the hating game and act your age e brown there are certain similarities for example they deal with not really enemies but um annoyance or dislike to love trope so all of them they are slightly annoyed with each other irritated with each other they don't like each other much but then it turns into love so all these three stories deals with such a trope and in all these three stories they think that the other hates them they have this misunderstanding with between them so also we have some forced proximity situations because in the un- honeymooners what happens is they attend a wedding and everybody other than the hero and heroine fall victim to a food poisoning accident and the heroine sister has already booked the honeymoon it is a booking which cannot be cancelled and she doesn't want to waste that entire honeymoon so she suggests her twin sister to take up on that honeymoon and the twin sister due to some sort of weird circumstance gets to go to the honeymoon with the guy whom she dislikes it's been quite a while since i read that book but he is somehow related to the groom so that groom's friend or brother goes with this twin sister to the honeymoon so they have the forced proximity situation 
connection there and in the case of hating game they are colleagues and their respective bosses work with each other so these guys have to work with each other but they dislike each other so they have that forced proximity situation there in the case of actor age eve brown also they are colleagues eve works under the guy so there also they have this forced proximity situations also in the unhoneymooners and the hating game they are forced to confront their family members for certain reasons and they have to stand up for each other so that theme is there in hating game and at your age eve brown you have a professional relationship uh, between each other so it's an office romance so that similarity is there between these two books so i think if you like one of these books you will most certainly enjoy the rest of the two so those were the recommendations for if you like this book you might like the other one so let me know which of these recommendations you like which of these recommendations you would like to read and if any of these recommendations are accurate whether you agree with me or disagree with me or if you have any new recommendations for me then i would be very very glad to hear that from you so if you have any comments questions or feedback then either you can comment down below or you can interact with me in my socials which is also given there that's it then until next time stay safe happy and healthy om shanti